This is one of the most historic cities of India, Patna, which encompasses the ancient capital of Patliputra. But even after the heydays, when it was a seat of ancient empire builders, this city played a critical role. Under the Mughals, it was a powerful provincial city, and in the 17th century, it emerged as an important centre of trade, being on the banks of the Ganga. In 1620, the East India Company set up a factory here, and from then on, other European powers came here. Echoes of this period can be seen in the rich heritage buildings here, which reflect the importance of the city and how it once was. But today, much of this period's heritage in Patna is at risk. The fight for land and the pressures of population growth are destroying the city's heritage. The, the idea of loss is so, so huge. I mean, in terms of, I, I mean, I always say Patna is being swallowed by, by this modernity. Our past and present can coexist. Our past and present can coalesce to form a meaningful future. Patna has a storied past, so to understand the city's heritage crisis, we took up a sliver of its past, its colonial heritage, to find the extent of damage that has been done over the last 20 years as a series of old colonial buildings in the city have been razed to the ground. This has been building up over time as the city gets more and more crowded. Convener of Patna's intact chapter explains. Patna has got a limited space because there are three rivers are around it. And what happened that when Patna became the capital of Bihar, then lot of people started coming to Patna because High Court was there, so, so, uh, then uh, Secretariat was there, administration was there. So gradually the uh, influx of people, lot of people started coming there and the, you can say almost today the population is 2.6 million, whereas the space available is more or less same. So what has happened that in care, because of that, you know, they started looking for some building and structures where they could live. And that is the reason that uh, those buildings, colonial buildings which were made, you see, they were, uh, became victim of that. And that is where we are facing the problem today. They had to make a spaces for new buildings to come up. And as, 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 that, as a result of that, uh, they started demolishing buildings. You see, the danger it was that there are so many heritage buildings are on the list. If I can read it for you. You see, Anjuman Islamia Hall was one of the oldest hall here. And it was the first hall, actually, public hall. Now, it has been dismantled uh, two years back. And new building has come up. It is right in the heart of the town. Then, there used to be a dark bungalow also. Uh, it was an old building, a very nice building, but unfortunately, the government dismantled it and constructed Loknak Bhavan there as a new building. Like that, there is Sina Library, which is a very prestigious library, but today the building is completely in ruins. Nobody is taking care. There used to be a Patna jail, Bakipur jail. Now, that also has been demolished, and you know, Buddha Smithy Park has come there. Like that, the collected building is, is still not decided whether it will be constructed or we are trying our best to protect it. To understand the problem, you have to look at the map of Patna and the tightly packed habitation that is visible through satellite imagery. The city is densely populated and it is only this stretch running parallel to the river front that has some breathing space. This is a stretch that houses much of the colonial buildings that are under threat today in Patna. Take for instance the Patna Collectorate, 
a clutch of buildings that includes the 17th century Dutch factory that would have been set up between 1645 and 51. This was taken over by the British in the early part of the 19th century and became their administrative headquarters, thereafter becoming the British Collectorate in 1857. The Collectorate is spread over 12 acres and contains two Dutch-era buildings and a slew of 19th and 20th century buildings. In 2016, the state government decided to demolish this complex and build multi-storied buildings here. This led to angry protests and a citizen-led movement demanding that the complex be saved. The battle was taken all the way to the Supreme Court of India that stayed the demolition drive. Journalist Kunal Dutt has been at the forefront of the Save the Patna Collectorate drive. He believes that citizens like him should have taken up the issue of Patna's heritage 30 years ago, when an iconic landmark of the city was destroyed. Actually, if you look at uh, the state of affairs when it comes to heritage preservation, we need to take our clock a little back. So I call it the dark bungalow syndrome. And because it started way back in the 90s, and it was one of the first iconic buildings, the 19th century, late 19th century building uh, that was demolished uh, to wake to make way for a huge urban monstrosity. And uh, I was a kid back then, I don't even know. And I asked my parents, uh, why is it called Dark Bungalow? I mean, there is nothing there. It's all huge buildings. So my parents told me that there's, there's actually a bungalow there and, and a dark bungalow, the concept of dark bungalow is so fascinating. And I thought perhaps that was a moment that Patna would have or should have uh, taken up the cudgels and actually fought for its heritage. Uh, it didn't happen. And uh, perhaps if that, movement would have kicked off or taken off from there as a, as a civil society movement, we would not have needed a, a something of that this sort uh, 25 years or 30 years later. And uh, between 1990 and 2010, that's an, another 20 year period, uh, it was sort of a lull, you know, things were in decay, things would still be standing. So you had this consolation that, you know, you're not losing it, but yes, you you pine for it that, okay, this is this is a part of a history which is which is slowly decaying. But since 2010, there, like I said, there was a sudden wave of demolition. So Bankipur Central Jail, uh, City SP Bungalow, uh, District and Session Judges Bungalow, which was a beautiful mansion on the banks of Ganga. And it was in a pristine condition, not that it was even in a state of decay. Um, Civil Surgeons Bungalow, uh, the PWD building, the six heritage bungalows on the Bailey Road, which, was, which would make way for uh, the huge Bihar Museum, which is an iconic modern building. And we welcome that, but the site is a problem. It was in 2016 that in response to the government's move to demolish the collectorate that Kunal and a group of heritage enthusiasts set up the Save the Patna Collectorate Forum. One significant thing the group did was to take the campaign wide. We understood that this is a shared heritage. You know, the idea of parochialism doesn't work here. The idea of nationalism doesn't work here. And we need to have a very unbiased perspective when you're looking at heritage. Today, when you see we tend to go into you know what is our heritage or their heritage and so this we came up with this platform it started on facebook of course our large work is done on ground and uh, we wanted to put together people like minded people who uh, who understand heritage who uh, who understand bihar who like patna or bihar for that matter do not get into the uh, the preoccupations or the prejudices that is being largely pervaded through mainstream media as well as social media largely and we wanted to create a platform which will not only allow people to connect with each other and give impetus to the movement, but at the same time, awaken themselves to the real Bihar that, that we don't get to see through national media or through, through other forums. And that is what uh, we did. We created a platform to not just uh, save a building or a, a particular precinct or a particular, um, you know, catering to a particular city or a state, but we wanted to usher in this ethos of heritage preservation, which we thought was lacking in Patna. This worked as a groundswell to save the collectorate gathered momentum with help from mainstream and social media in India and abroad. The matter finally reached the Supreme Court, which stayed the demolition. For Kunal, the aim of the campaign was to try to light a spark among the people of Patna, not just save one monument. Part of our history, the making of Bihar, and collectorate history is so fascinating is because 
it is not just pre-independence history, it is pre-Bihar history, pre-modern Bihar. You know, it has seen creation of Bihar and Odisha in 1912. It has seen, of course, the mutiny of 1857. It has seen the 1934 earthquake, the 1897 earthquake. It has seen two world wars. On September 11, 1943, when the fascist forces of Italy were defeated, there were celebrations held in the compound of the collectorate. The poor were fed, the church, the mosque, and the temples, and the gurudwaras, you know, they were lit up. So if you look at, there is such a fascinating story to it. You want to, you, you just don't demolish your buildings or your or your past, you demolish your stories, you demolish your memories. And and our fight is not just to 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 compete to save a piece of a brick and mortar, because these are not brick and mortar. These are these are memories of your past. My grandfather has seen is my great grandfather has seen is perhaps even Guru Govind Singh saw it in back in 1666, because it is even beyond that. The campaign to save Patna Collectorate also brought to the fore many issues. First, that the city of Patna had no official listing of the heritage sites in the city. Second, that while there are numerous sites strewn across the city, only a handful had protection of any kind. The Central Archaeological Survey of India has listed 11 monuments of national importance in Patna and most of these are sites from the modern era, in the area of old Patliputra. The State Archaeology Department's list includes an even smaller set of sites, the most prominent of them being the Golghar. Conservative estimates are that there are at least 400 sites in the city that fall under the heritage category that need to be protected. They are either in private hands and being allowed to crumble, or they are government-owned and so under the purview of the State Public Works Department. As the team trying to save the Patna Collectorate dug deeper, they also realized that the state government had been sitting on a proposal to set up a heritage wing for the city from 2012. When you look at urban policies, you know, cities like Delhi, which has the Delhi Urban Art Commission or Calcutta has its, at its own local level, they have the Calcutta Heritage Committee at the corporation level. Patna, unfortunately, did not have a single heritage commission until the collectorate case happened. When INTAC took the matter to the Patna High Court, and uh, one of the team members were able to find out that since 2012, the Bihar government was sitting on a proposed Bihar Urban Arts and Heritage Commission. And on, uh, the, on the response of that, Patna High Court directed the government to form the Heritage Commission. And the Heritage Commission was constituted in the, in the hushish way during the pandemic, March 2020. And they also did their own survey. They also did the site visit and eventually they, they sort of, uh, to answer your question, like how did the government got away with it? Because the Heritage Commission in a way uh, acquiesced into that decision. Instead of a Heritage Commission taking a very strong stand, first of all, the Heritage Commission is flawed. All the seven members uh, are government officials. You know, it's like, it's like I, am, I am the accused and I am myself the jury. You know, it's, it doesn't happen that way. Patna's story is not unique. You will find it across Indian cities which are bursting at the seams. At the heart of the problem is a lack of space, brought clearly home through this map of Patna. The government is desperate to modernize and build new buildings, while the Archaeological Survey of India is so resource trapped that it can do little. You need to have, and if you look at the, the judgment of uh, the Patna High Court in the Vakf building case, they have a very, and I just want to point out, uh, it, it says preservation of historical heritage and traditional values of buildings in the state, which refers to Bihar, is one of the most neglected aspects of the governance in state of Bihar's. And then it goes on to say to the bench, it appears that the intention and the will to preserve its history is lacking in the state's observation from, from, a, from a high court. Uh, when it talks about uh, the, the role that a government must play in preserving its heritage, which is part of our constitution, it's our fundamental duty, I mean, I or you or anyone else, we are not doing something which is, uh, which is, which is over and above uh, us. It is actually as a citizen of this country that, uh, and this constitution that we, that we imbibe, that it's, it asks us to, to preserve our heritage. And government has got away with it, secondly, also because many of these buildings have been listed, but these are merely ornamental listings. So for example, the collected building, the PMCH, which is undergoing demolition as we speak, the uh, the gold market, which is a more than 100-year-old market built by uh, the British, 
and uh, it was demolished in the name of smart city actually uh, then you have the anjuman islamia hall which is patna's first public hall built with public subscription and its ceiling was so high it was phenomenal uh, subhash chandra bose nehru mohammad ali jinnah all the big personalities have spoken there but it was taken down and the even even in media the mainstream media or the local media the state media it did not create a murmur hardly anybody knew that it had been demolished i went to patna city the other day and somebody said me kya baat kar rahe hain shaheed kar diya gaya use so people are not aware of it that they are losing their heritage so government job is quite easy then you know they can just uh, get away with a building they know there will be no protest they know uh, people are not aware of its historical value so neither it is listed nor the state archaeology or the the local body uh, intervenes in that they say it's a state matter or it's a government matter why should we interfere in 2021 another major demolition was proposed this time the target was a part of the 130 year old landmark of patna the famous khuda bakhsh library that houses one of the finest private collections of books in india intak and lal were at the forefront of the protest against it you see khuda bakhsh library is a very old library Uh, in fact uh, it was constructed in 1891 as bold as that and then it has got a store of valuable books i have seen manuscripts and uh, uh, paintings of mogal period original paintings are there and a uh, lot of students go there every day and study refer the books like that is a very prestigious institute and anybody com- coming to patna either he is a president or prime minister or any head of a state or anybody they normally make it a visit to uh, khuda bakhsh library but what happened that government uh, co- decided to construct a double storied uh, flyover from gandhi maidan to science college and in between is 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 a uh, medical college then khuda bakhsh library and lot of institutions lot of institutions are there so uh, they they wanted that some portion of in that building there is a corner there is a reading room in khuda bakhsh library that was also constructed very long time back in 1905 and uh, they wanted to demolish part of it and also to acquire part of their lawn that means ki after they would acquire only probably even 10 feet of a space in the frontage of the library would not have been there so as soon as it came to more then we again wrote to the chief minister about it and other ministers concerned that uh, we should not harm this building in any way and then uh, in fact we went to the press press also supported us a lot of articles were uh, coming every day and then Uh, even uh, we contacted uh, bbc people contacted they also announced it from there like that uh, so many things happened and uh, finally uh, with all these things uh, the government decided not to acquire any portion of it but but the uh, sad part is that uh, there will be a double storied uh, structure almost 25 feet away from the main building and that is thing but they are not touching it they are not touching anything of khuda bakhsh library the proposal to demolish a part of the library was part of a larger demolition drive to build an elevated flyover stretching almost 2 kilometers from the city's kargil chowk this flyover will have an impact on a slew of buildings along the stretch Kunal believes that the fact that this was hardly mentioned indicates a deeper problem when it comes to heritage conservation in India. With the Khuda Bakhsh case particularly there is one aspect I think which has not been brought out in the public domain is that I think in Bihar particularly we are that happens across India but in Bihar particularly we are obsessed with uh, with famous sites so I I call it this this nalanda bodhgaya syndrome we have see we always want to talk about in in a very glorified way of our past but these are well preserved historic sites both of these are now unesco world heritage sites even if we don't do anything they are not going anywhere 
uh, and which is good if we, if we take pride in our in our glorious past which is we should do that but what happens is when you take the example of khuda baksh library there are there are several other heritage buildings on that same stretch not a single person said let's also save patna college uh, facade let's also save science college facade let's also save uh, the pmc which is going to be completely knocked down why only khuda baksh library collected is uh, not very far from there nobody even spoke during that time about it so there is this this very heart breaking tendency among people to take up sites which are already well known and if something happens to that let's fight for it people started doing uh, petitions on it i think patna is currently going through a very rough phase and uh, it that is why particularly breaks my heart not just because it's my hometown but i think if it would have been any other city i would have been equally heartbroken the pace is so uh, i mean it's such a frenetic pace the development you know it's it uh, it doesn't let you settle down the one moment you're dealing with oh we are going to lose this one next day there's a news that there could be another one to be taken down then there's a third one i mean in fact if you say we could be ended up creating this whole island of campaign and movement we need a separate movement for you know need for the anjuman islamia which we lost in 2018 we could need, we would be needing a separate movement for the pmch which history goes back to 1874 when one of the first few medical schools was opened in the subcontinent the temple medical school that we are losing now we and today if we the risk that we talk about the city that it faces the, the number one risk it faces is the is the homogenization of the city which means it will become any other city of or, or, or second is the erasure of memory that it the risk that it faces the third is that people will will today feel very proud about the new fancy malls and multiplexes coming around them but after a certain period of time there will be a saturation point when they will want to go back to their past or to to this anchors of memories but they will not find it they will be floating around in an ocean of concrete you look at the ganga in fact if you talk about this look at our ganga they have created a 22 km corridor on the ganga river and people go there to take selfies i mean after some time they will realize the mistake in san francisco my american friend told me there's an earthquake they had a similar structure it it went down they never rebuilt it they realized their mistake i don't know when will patna realize their mistake this is not a problem that only patna faces Over the last two decades, heritage in most of India's cities has been at risk. At the heart of the issue is a lack of awareness. If you don't know what you have, how will you know what you are losing? To my mind, the most important thing is that the community should be made aware about it. They should know that. to respect heritage buildings and uh, uh, once they decide about it government can do nothing but if the community decides government has to agree to it but if the community is weak then anybody will take advantage that is the reason one of the reason we are we are we are uh, in fact trying requesting that this should be taught in the school also what is heritage why it is important like that so that everybody right from the beginning they come to know and then they respect it the furor over the plan to demolish a part of the khuda baksh library was the result of a small movement of awakening among the people of patna made possible by the efforts of citizen groups like save historic patna collectorate and intact but we need a long term solution to the problem of balancing the need to protect our heritage and the government's efforts to improve infrastructure and facilities the only way this can happen is if all stakeholders come together and work on a plan that is backed with the right action <laughs>